but I wanted to talk about a few things that brought me from living in Puerto Rico, um, applying for um, the School of Librarianship there, and how I ended up here today. Um, I am originally from Puerto Rico um, via the military. My father was in the service. I was born in a military base, Fort Hood, Texas. Um, after my father left the military, he went into the ministry, and we moved to Puerto Rico, where I grew up. Um, went to the University of Puerto Rico, and I worked there. And I think I knew I wanted to be a librarian since I was eight. When you go to school and say, what do you want to be? I said, I want to be a librarian, which in Spanish would be bibliotecaria. Um, so I already knew what I wanted to do. I knew that I had a storytelling in my veins. I know that I wanted to tell the story of who we are. So I went and acquired a degree in history, history of Puerto Rico, history of the United States, um, to complement my master's program um, in the future. Um, I was blessed to be accepted into this program and I was welcomed by great mentors, Ms. Noni, Dr. Feehan, Professor Quinnell, and many others. Um, while I was here, I was a graduate assistant. I was crawling under desk and fixing computers um, before the renovation, um, um, assisting professors with digitizing their materials, uh, doing a little bit of everything. Um, after graduating from here, oh, while I was while I was uh, completing my program, I was a library aide at the Lexington County Public Library. And there, um, again, what Ms. Joyce was talking about earlier, I took advantage of the opportunity to help with providing services to Hispanic Latino communities. So I was uh, telling the stories, helping with the programming, um, translating materials for the Lexington County Public Library as a library aide. One thing that Ms. Joyce mentioned that I want to echo is that when you are passionate about the community that you are serving, your work will show and people will take notice. And the reason why I say that is it will tie into where I am today. After working here as a graduate assistant, um, I met a number of colleagues, fellow students that are now my colleagues and have, and we have worked together. Um, that is how I was selected for my current position. Um, maybe 25% of the people who work at Richland County Public Library have come from this program. And a lot of them are, a lot of them are my contemporaries a few years before, a few years after, but we have had the same experiences here in this community. Um, while I was doing my bachelor's degree, I focus on history of Puerto Rico film, any type of history that will help me understand the story of who we are. And um, again, being that literacy was my main focus, when I came on board to this program, I did the public service track, specifically the youth services track. My mentor and advisor, Dr. Patricia Feehan. Well, naturally, I did the storytelling. Um, I did independent study with um, Latino materials. I did a six hour independent study because I was in my third trimester in, with my first child, um, who incidentally is part of the slightly Attractive Men of Sliss first edition. Um, <laughs> my two-year-old at that time and my husband were part of that um, that initiative from Lissa. So we support Lissa 100%. It is very important for us to be part of these organizations because when we go recruiting staff to be part of our organizations, they need to know that the profession looks like them. And this is a good segue into what one of my main interests is, which is diversity and multicultural services, library services to all underserved populations. And since that was one of my interests, I ended up working at the South Carolina State Library. I was a reader's advisor's uh, librarian for Pat Davenport with the Talking Book Services program. And it brought me to tears to see people motivated to listen to their books in audio when they had no sight. Um, I sat on the accessibility committee um, making sure that we were, the South Carolina State Library at that time was up to date with being accessible and up to date with all of their um, requirements. Um, after being there for about 18 months, I was blessed again with the job as a consultant with the library development services, which meant that I would be visiting every county in South Carolina offering services 
um, for those counties. Um, we will go out into the counties and talk about discos. We will go out into the counties and talk about how to deliver programs for youth, how to program uh, for seniors. So it was on the van and on the go all the time. And in one of those interactions, I met my next uh, employer. Um, we went to visit the Fort Jackson Post Library since it's within South Carolina to offer um, consulting services uh, for their computer program, for their technology program. And we went to consult in March and I acquired a position in December. I was approached and said, well, will you mind delivering and following through with your recommendations? And I said, of course. So again, if you're passionate about what you do, just be very strategic and very deliberate as to how you present yourself. Um, after being at the Army Library program at Fort Jackson, we were able to, de to develop children's services. They did not have a youth services librarian. So after four years, we developed a teen advisory board, teen book discussion, teen craft programs. We had a victory readers program that is a book club for the retirees. We have 46,000 retirees in South Carolina um, of the Army alone, um, including some of the Air Force that we have at Shaw. Um, so we were able to look at the sub populations, those pockets of underserved populations, and do what we could with no budget to offer them a space where they could come into the library. So we did develop a summer reader program that they did not have. Um, we did um, do some outreach and community service components. And go as a one-person department, which we, you will learn soon, that if you're in the public service area and not in an academic setting, you will be a one-person department. And just like her, you will be doing doing the tours, chain, changing the liners on the trash cans, um, developing the story time, and going out into the field to deliver the story time. So one of the things that we did is we partnered with our elementary schools, our Department of Defense elementary schools, those schools on base, on post, and we would deliver programs to them. We also partner with all the different community resources that we had there. Um, partnerships are very important to me. When we, these are harsh economic times, and it, we have to be very conservative with our resources. Um, we, we're not going to be granted the same book budget every year, so we have to make sure that we partner in ways that we do not have redundant services. So reaching out to the community, it's part of just what we do. Um, and I guess that was a good segue into the position that I currently hold, um, which is an outreach librarian at the Richland County Public Library. Now, um, we do outreach to different groups. Just today I was at the Children's Hospital doing a story time. No, they're not Hispanic Latino, they're mainstream um, to children at the Children's Hospital for Mental Health. Um, but my focus group is to develop programs for the Hispanic Latino community. And how we do that is that we look at what is already being offered here in Columbia, South Carolina and the neighboring counties and we seek those meaningful, important partnerships to see that we're not duplicating efforts and that we're being, being very strategic and deliberate as to how to service this population. Um, right now we're in the process that we have to educate the entire library staff. Um, a lot of cultural awareness, um, break the myths and all the misconceptions as to what the Hispanic Latino community looks like. Um, different literacy levels, different socioeconomics, so that's the first step. After that we're going to uh, dedicate some money to boost the collection, um, to have some Spanish language materials so that we can circulate in addition to having just programs. We want them to come back after the program is done and check out material so they will continue to come to us, not only for the story time. Um, which is, I guess, a good segue for what is happening now. Um, when I graduated from this program, I said to myself, I would like to be director of a library in five years. And every move, every step that I took was very deliberate in making sure that my work spoke for me, that my curriculum vitae included um, volunteer hours, service, community service hours, participation in community, uh, partnerships that are already established, being innovative and using technology in our, in our, we were talking earlier about using technology in story times, using our iPads in the story time, um, and those type of 
of, of ideas, but more so it's making sure that you do give back. Um, I was recently offered and I accepted the chief position for the Shaw Air Force Library, the McElveen Library <coughs> at Shaw Air Force. And again, if you are very deliberate as to which steps you take in your career, it is going to show and your work is gonna speak for you. Um, I'm not the, hold, the holder of any knowledge, but I've been fortunate and blessed um, to meet the right people and take the right steps. And as of 25 October, I will be Chief Librarian at Shaw Air Force. So just be very, very selective as to what you do. Um, don't turn down any job. There is no job that is beneath you. When you are librarian or librarian two, you will have the key to the toilet paper. So when it needs changing, do not step back and say that is beneath me, let me get a library aid. You always have to have your game face on. It's like they say, dance like nobody is watching, work like nobody is watching you, just throw yourself into it and it's gonna pay back and that's at the point that I am. So I'm blessed to be here, thank you for having me.